Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.42 and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the last of our frequency based effects that come inside of Bitwig Studio, the resonator bank. So the resonator bank is not an effect that you're probably going to pull too often. It's really a sound designer's tool and if you're someone like me who does a lot of experimental composition work, the resonator bank is pretty incredible but for everybody else it can be a pretty tough effect to harness and to know when and how to use. But don't forget that we have another dry wet control on there. So don't be afraid to after a reverb or after a delay or something, something a little quieter back in the mix to throw it in there just to have something a little bit different and to make your sound be that much different from everybody else's. So let's take a look at this resonator bank here. And really, this is going to work best on something that has a lot of frequency content. Okay, so a lot of stuff going on. It doesn't even have to really be logical. And when you have something like that, like white noise, for example, you can use the resonator bank and the resonator bank will be able to give that sound that originally didn't really have any tonality or any focus to it. It can give it that little bit of tonality or really just make it sound like something completely different, make it sing, because this is all about resonance. It's all about vibration, finding those resonant points, those resonant peaks, and either boosting them, cutting them, or adding something completely new. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, first and foremost, Foremost, if we just put this on a sine tone, you're going to hear how it can be kind of difficult to work with this because we only have like one point and that's at 440. So trying to add anything additional might be a little bit tricky. So here's our sine tone. And we see what we have here, right? We're at 440 and then again we have another peak in this area. So if I pull in the resonator bank, it makes a nice sound when it comes in but as you can tell, nothing's really happening. So I'll just go through these controls really quickly. The bottom control here, the third control, is gain. So I can pull all of these down, and then if I do that, the effect is not gonna do anything, right? It's just gonna turn everything off. I have my mix control, my dry wet, so I could pull that back. Um, the global shift isn't going to work unless we actually are bringing in some resonance. So if I turn this left to right, it's not going to do anything, but like I showed you with the frequency shifter, this is basically what we have here. We have a cue to determine how wide of a band we want to be emphasizing here with our various frequencies. And then at the very bottom, we have key tracking and glide. And you're not really going to use those unless you're following this. Um, or excuse me, unless you're putting this on an instrument track. So if we were putting this on the polysynth, we'd probably want um, this device to key track. And key tracking is just going to take into account when you're changing pitches. So if I'm playing from an A to a C to an E, for example, this will take um, that note data and it will adjust the effect accordingly so that as I go from A to E, it will recognize how far of a frequency jump that is and it will adjust these frequencies accordingly so that everything can kind of sound more logical. Otherwise, um, especially if we've dialed something in that's really harmonically pleasing or really consonant or dissonant, you know, you don't wanna be jumping around and then suddenly coming up with all new sorts of harmonies. In some cases you will want to do that, in some cases you won't. So that's what the key tracking will allow you to do and you can turn that up here. And then we have a glide control which will make it so that when we're going from like that A to E, it won't just jump. If we put the glide on, it will subtly glide from the one parameter to the next. So it's kind of like, okay, if we were to not have glide on, it would be like just a jump from, let's say, wherever we are here, 204 to then 500 as compared to going from 500 and then gliding to that other point um, with the frequency control. And you can set the amount of time right here all the way up to one second, which is probably gonna be quite high. But if you've already gone in here and messed with any of these presets, you're gonna see that none of them have key tracking or glide enabled by default. So if I play back my sine wave here and I'm trying to add some additional resonance, it's gonna be quite difficult because all I have is this one peak here at 400, but I can try to see what I can come up with. So I pull this up and right now all it's doing is emphasizing that 440, especially as I get closer to it. As I get further away from 440, we're gonna to start to lose this. And then maybe we'll be lucky and hit on something else. But with just the sine wave, it's going to be very difficult. I 
the best usage of the resonator bank, like I said, is with something that's not really pitch, something that's just a little bit more random. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you kind of a fun and cool technique that I use quite frequently. Um, I'm just gonna record some of this studio noise and what I'm probably gonna end up recording is just the sound of the fan on my laptop. Uh, it's very hot in here, so I've just had that going like nonstop. So under here on no input, I'm going to choose the mono input, which I think is just the background noise. Not 100% sure, now I am. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna click record right here. here, turn monitor off, and we'll just get a little bit of this background noise. All right, that should be good. You can hear if we play this back, it's probably not gonna sound like much of anything. Let's turn record off, take a listen to this. All right, unfortunately I can hear some clicks. So let's just loop this little section here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add a couple of tool devices just to turn this up. Right, that should be good. And now I'm gonna add the resonator bank. Already, you could hear how we took that background noise and have now made it sing. We've already made a texture and I haven't even had to adjust any of the parameters here inside the resonator bank. Some of these presets are pretty cool. If you don't want to fumble around with the frequencies all day, you could load up like the minor. So this should now give it a minor feel. Make it darker. Very cool. And if I find one particular resonance I really like, I could boost that. I can even add a delay here. Uh, let's just randomly pick one. So it's an absolutely incredibly powerful sound design tool. Uh, so you can take things just like background noise in your own studio or in your own space, feed that into the resonator bank, and you can hear how easy it is to come up with some really unique and cool textures, especially when you start to combine those with some of the other effects, specifically the delay effects, but we could even add in um, a, let's do a resonator bank into a resonator bank.
frequency. Or kind of like that one. Let's add something from real low. So as you guys can tell, I'm having way too much fun with just the resonator bank and some of the effects that we've already had access to inside of Bitwig Studio. Again, I know this isn't necessarily something that you would normally do, especially if you're somebody who's interested in a particular genre or type of music, but these sorts of experiments are just a great way to get familiar with the devices inside of Bitwig Studio without the pressure of having to put out something that fits a certain mold or that can be... I don't know, I guess considered super professional. Not that what we're doing there can't be considered professional because I have a good idea of what's gonna happen every time I'm turning one of those knobs and then I'm just kind of listening to hear what's going to occur. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I do encourage you to mess around with this. Remember, it's gonna work best on things that do have a lot of harmonic content already. Thank you so much for watching and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson.